Hello everyone, it's Joe Menza again with another watercolor painting video. And you'll notice right off the get-go, I've gotten very lazy. <laughs> I sprayed the entire paper down with my spray bottle and got it wet with a nice sheen. Just wait a few seconds before I start applying some paint. Let that absorb in a little bit. So I hope everyone out there is doing well and they're enjoying their painting process. I've been getting some messages from people and some paintings. Um, you can always send me your work or post it in our Ron Ranson group on Facebook. I always enjoy seeing the results that you get. So I'm applying Just a little bit more water, adjust my camera a little bit here, just kind of spreading out the water on the paper here. So I want to do a little bit of a colorful scene, trying to do just more than just the blue skies. And so we're going to start off, we're going to use some orange. So this would be a combination of alizarin crimson and cad yellow hue. You know, I get a lot of people asking me about showing my palette uh, and my mixing. And I do have a couple videos where I show that. It's, it's, it's difficult for me to hold that up the way that I sit when I'm painting. All, to always show that um, from my little portable palette, especially when I'm at my desk doing a lunchtime type thing. But you can watch those, but I don't really do a lot of mixing. I mix almost more on the paper. I kind of dab my brush in and I kind of mix on the paper more than in the tray. I do a little bit of that but really not much. So I'm still working with the alizarin crimson and cad yellow hue. I'm trying to make a nice source of light in the middle with a you know a bright yellow and the red off to the around the sides. I'm just coming in with my Frank Clark go here brush. I like using this for blending because it's nice and soft. And I sprayed a little bit of water in the center just to get some of that running down. Now if you lose a little bit you can always add a little bit more. So just a little bit more of that orangey color. So for beginners this is kind of like your first wash and um, if you're just starting out this is a hard it's not hard necessarily but it's it's one of those points to grasp because when you start to paint you know what the end result is so you can kind of reverse engineer it in your mind but think of it as you're putting in the backdrop um, you're kind of setting the stage for what you're going to do. So the first layers that you're putting down are like uh, the background wash, initial wash. Okay, and then everything you lay over that is going to be the elements that stand out in front of that background. So if you're experimenting, just come up with some different color schemes and then build up on top of that. That's what I do from my imagination. I, I decide on some colors. I start laying it down and then I just kind of work it as I go. So now I'm adding alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, a little bit of Payne's gray to get a gray sort of a cloud pattern. And I'm coming in and just pressing those bristles. There's two ways of applying clouds. One is with a paddling stroke and the other is to press the bristles into the paper and sort of uh, push in the clouds. And for me, the pressing of the brush creates more realistically shaped clouds. So that's what we have here. And I've brought those in over the sun
or the sunlight. And now I'm going to move down into the foreground area here while I give that a chance to dry before I put in any sort of mountains or any middle ground. Normally I move down the paper, but sometimes if I want it to dry and I don't want to worry about using a hair dryer, I will drop down the page and I'll jump around and I'll allow those other areas just to dry naturally. So we're going to put in some land masses down at the bottom. And some grass. Now, here I'm just kind of thinking I might do a reflection. Um, but either way, there's going to be some nice clumps of land here. So I'm giving it a little spray. Spraying, blotting with a tissue, flicking with toothbrush. Uh, all of those things in a plastic card for texture just ways to find ways to get texture in your in your paint and it will give it uh, it'll take it from being flat looking to just more realistic so the important thing here is I want to keep the light where there's going to be water, I want to keep the light in the center so that it looks reflective of the sky. So right now I'm just putting in a base. We've got some grasses and things. And I have to be very, very careful here not to close up that middle opening. giving it a little spray with my spray bottle and if you haven't watched other videos I like to use a couple different spray bottles if you use a large sort of a uh, household spray bottle the like 20 ounce it tends to deliver larger particles of water and you can turn the nozzle and open it or close it and if you use the very small spray bottles that you get from your art store, they tend to be a finer mist. And if you really want random blobs of water, you can use a toothbrush and flick it with your finger. So in keeping with the sky theme, we've got Payne's Gray Ultramarine Blue and Alizarin Crimson. Now, I'm going darker with this mountain. And what tends to happen is when I scrape the peaks, it causes it to look much lighter because I'm scraping away the paint. So by going darker, it will help stand that out, I've found. Now, because there's a little bit of red and yellow underneath, when you scrape away the paint, it will look as if it's reflecting that sky which is an interesting uh, effect. So as you can see, we've got a natural looking mountain and now it's more toward the gray or white side now that I've scraped that off. So you can see the mindset behind making that good and dark. Now, if you were going to do a more distant mountain with no scraping, you want something lighter that looks, you know, more distant. So now I'm just going to take my hake brush and I'm going to put in a nice big pine tree here. And I'm not you purposely not using the fan brush that I usually like to use just because somebody might not have one. And I'm going to try to do more in this one with just the hakes. Or... Hake brushes for those of you in the pronunciation camp that want to know that we know how to pronounce it. It's a funny thing because uh, if you go back, you'll notice a lot of people pronounce them hakes. So it just sort of caught on. And 
needless to say, they are a large, the Ron Ranson large style goat hair brush style brush is uh, trimmed in the Ron edge. Ranson to give you a straight edge like I'm doing with this tree here. So your hairs can come together and create sort of a chiseled edge. I have a video on that. I've used some burnt umber and whatever other colors were on the brush. I'm just making a nice tree trunk here, just going straight up off the page. Just the, the beginnings of a couple of branches. And uh, one thing you'll notice if you look to the left on the pine tree, I've worked in some highlights of cad yellow hue. And if you do that while wet and wet, it'll create a nice effect. Now we're going to go in close and just show some texturing and some rock making with the plastic card and the heavy areas. And just this area here, I'm just going to go over very, very quickly. And I've also done a little scraping in the tree just to show you the various effects that you can do. Now you don't want to overdo this, but if you enjoy it and you're happy with the outcome, then I say go for it. So I'm coming back in on all the areas that I've scraped with darker tones. And by doing this, I notice a lot of people don't. They scra scrape and then they don't follow back up. But follow back up with some darker colors underneath or on one side of the scraping to make that stand out and to kind of hide a little bit of the scraping effect so it doesn't look like it's been scraped, if that makes sense. So I'm going to come in with a number three rigger brush, and I'm going to add some branches to the tree to the right. And when you're using this brush, I don't really talk about this much. I'm not the best branch maker anyway, but um, you need a lot of liquid. I've got a new brush on order that's kind of like a needle. It holds a lot more. I'll show that in, in another video. But you're pushing down. You're using the side of your brush as opposed to the tip. And so you're pressing that and you're trying to get all the paint off of it. And then if you want finer branches then you can stick more with the tip. So you start out where the branch would be fatter by pressing against the side of the brush and then work your way to the tip as you get to the end of the branch. I'm just going to create some more textures here. That'll be the bank of the where the water is here. So a sort of rocky bank. I'm just going to re-scrape in this tree a little bit and show you how you can make little roots and things. I'm just going to come back and accentuate the yellow uh, hue here and the tips that would be you know, the light would be coming off of being a little careful we don't want too much we don't want green to really take over the painting I tend to do that and I'll look back and I'll say oh, I don't know did I use too much green? Is green too dominant of a color? Does it matter? Now I'm taking my dried brush and letting the bristles do the work here of just pressing in some leaves with the colors that are on the brush already. And this is stippling and it really is the easiest way to make leaves. I don't think too many people really are going to paint individual leaves one at a time. I'm sure that people are out there, they're doing it, but uh, 
that's just not for me. So I'm just adding a little cad yellow hue just to create some light on the on the leaves. And I'm going to do the same in the other areas. This will dry back, so there's got to be an element of expectation from knowing, doing many paintings, that this will ultimately settle down. The sheen will be lost from the wet paint. That's the biggest thing with doing watercolor is what you put on paper isn't always what you get at the end of the painting when it's fully dry. That's why you have a lot of viewers that say they want to see the painting after it's dry and then of course in a mat so they can adequately gauge the results of what you did during the painting. With acrylic and oil you pretty much get what you see. So now we're just kind of finishing up some details. I think we have a nice scene here. We've got some nice reflections into the water. I'm just using my dry brush here to just make it look a little more reflective, a little more like water. And I'm also going back and dabbing. I might have went a little heavy on certain areas and I can use that as sort of a lifting of excess paint. Also with that Frank Clark goat hair brush just like this here and you can stipple in a little the this brush is really good for stippling too and just stippling in a little little more yellow and a little more on the tree here it's very easy to like what you see and then not have the restraint of, okay, I'm gonna do this everywhere. It looks so good here. And then you put your head back and you go, I overdid it. So it's, it's so very easy to do that. So over here, I just thought I would dip in some, uh, dab in, dip in some sort of little, just some little pines back here because to the right of the tree, the spacing from where it is, if your eyes were to go over there for some reason, there's just, there's nothing really there. It's just something just to give a little additional detail back there. I'm just gonna make it easy. I'll just take the, the brush and just make some little pointy things. Not very much detail. I'll put a little bit of yellow in there. Some little darker at the bottom They're not really as pointy as I would like them, but you get the idea. There's something back there. I can't put them too far back because then it'll look the mountain will look too small. So I'm just going to put some little points up on top here using the side of the brush. And I'm just going to dab in some cad yellow hue to accent to give it a little bit of form factor. Just to reflect that sun coming through. I added a little bit of red, almost an orangey, dark orangey color. And we're going to dab that in the middle here. Just maybe it's reflecting off of the sun down the middle. Just a little warmth there. 
it's just a little orangey color as that sun is coming down and reflecting on the lake. So that's really about it. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, leave some comments below and uh, visit my site where you can get access to all my social media and links and my shop, joemenzaart.com or joemenza.com. Here's a close-up of the finished painting, and then we'll look at it in a virtual frame. And there's the finished product. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Have a great weekend.